This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on the Fairness Project, recorded by user Nosebag Bear. The material recorded is current as on the 30th of August 2019. Fairness Project from Wikipedia, free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. The Fairness Project is a United States 501c4 charitable organisation created on October 2015. It is funded by the SEIU United Healthcare Workers West, a California healthcare workers union. It exists to promote general economic and social welfare throughout the US by use of ballot measures to circumvent deadlock in law changes by the legislative and executive branches of government. The project acts as a national body supporting state organisations and campaigns with targeted funding rather than by direct campaigning. They support the gathering of signatures to meet the variable requirements to trigger ballots in states and then aid the campaigns with early financial backing, strategic advice and various campaign tools. The project has sought to improve state minimum wages both through stepped annual increases and through elimination of tip credit exemption The project has expanded Medicaid coverage, providing funding in the most expensive ballot campaigns ever fought. Usually alongside their other campaigns, the Fairness Project has also supported improving paid sick leave coverage. The project has supported 17 proposals in total, and 16 of them have passed. Concern has arisen about the lack of transparency of non-state organisations like the Fairness Project pushing local decisions. This introduction is accompanied by a photo of the Fairness Project's logo. Contents. This article contains seven sections as follows. Section 1, History. Section 2, Minimum Wage Increases. Section 3, Medicaid Coverage Extension. Section 4, Other Issues. Section 5, Opposition and Controversies. Section 6, References. Section 7, External Links. There is also an information box accompanying this article. Section 1. History The Fairness Project was created in Washington, D.C. on the 22nd of October 2015, in the immediate run-up to the 2016 U.S. presidential election. It is funded by the SEIU United Healthcare Workers West, a California healthcare workers' union. One of the major dispute points between Democratic and Republican candidates had been the issue of whether to raise the federal minimum wage, set at $7.25 for most employees. The federal wage was set in 2009, and therefore real-term values had dropped significantly. With no confirmed prospect of a federal increase, there was increasing pressure for states to raise their own minimum wage values. However, there was also deadlock within state governments, both between state legislatures and between the legislature and governors who could veto changes. This has led to an increasing number of local initiatives exercising their rights, either by law or state constitutions, to place proposals for statewide ballots to institute legislative change by a direct democracy. The founding executive director, Ryan Johnson, had volunteered to aid a number of these initiatives in 2015, before realising that there was nationwide interest in increased usage. This led to the creation of the project as a coordinating non-profit that could fundraise on a broader campaign structure, educate electorates of their ballot rights, and focus financial and volunteer support where it was most needed. The initial focus was to make use of SEIU United Healthcare Workers West's strategy, which was to place ballot initiatives in the 24 states that allowed them on the issues of minimum wage. Section 2. Minimum Wage Increases 2016 Ballots The first targeted campaign of the Fairness Project and its focus for 2016 was to improve minimum wages. Initially, this was to focus on three regions, Maine, California and Washington, D.C., where the 2015 minimum wages were $7.50, $9 and $10.50 respectively. This provided both a geographical mix as well as a mix of difficulties. It was believed that Washington and Maine would prove viable campaigns due to previous local votes for higher city minimum wages, but that California would prove a great challenge due to a pre-existing coalition of business interests that killed the attempts to pass the increase in the state legislature. The proposed motions in Washington and California were fairly similar, 
seeking to implement an immediate small increase with additional annual graduated increases leading to $15 by 2020 or 2021, respectively. The target of the campaign in Maine was aimed at $12 by 2020, a comparable increase to the other proposals. All three proposals proved initially successful and gathered the minimum required signatures. 365,880 for California, 23,200 for Washington, D.C., and 60,000 in Maine. However, in Washington and California, the gathering of support placed pressure on the city and state governments. Therefore, both self-implemented legislation equivalent to that in the ballots, and so the proposals were withdrawn, the goals having been satisfied. In Maine, the vote went ahead and was approved by 55.5% of the voters. After the votes, there was a smaller campaign to reinstate the restaurant tip credit rule, where tips can make up to 50% of staff wages lowering the effective minimum wage. As of 2018, restrictions on using tip credit were not being enforced. As the campaigns proved successful, the project expanded their support to local initiatives in Colorado, Washington State and Arizona. The proposals for Colorado and Arizona also sought to raise the minimum wage to $12 by 2020, from $8.31 and $8.05 respectively. Washington, which already had certain areas with higher base wages, such as Seattle, settled on targeting $15 from $9.47, again by 2020. These additional propositions all remained on the ballot and were all approved by their electorates. 2018 Ballots In 2018, the project made additional efforts to support local groups advocating minimum wage ballots. This support was focused in Missouri, where along with the National Employment Law Center, a combined $537,500 was donated by advocacy groups, as well as Arkansas. Financial assistance was also granted in Michigan, where the ballot proposal only narrowly satisfied the requirement one day before the deadline. The Missouri ballot proposal aims to increase the minimum wage from $8.16 to $12 by 2023, as well as eliminating the tip credit allowance. The Michigan proposal sought to raise the wage from $7.70 to $12 by 2022, although it exempts government workers. Both ballots were placed on at the 6th November 2018 elections. Missouri voted in favour with a 61% majority. Michigan's legislature passed equivalent measures, thus removing the initiative from the ballot. There were repeated accusations that this decision was made in order to enable easier future amendments, as ballot proposed law would require a three-quarters supermajority of each house to overrule. The Arkansas proposal was a pure minimum wage setup, crafted by David Crouch. It aimed to increase immediately from $8.50 to $9.25, which stepped annual increments ultimately up to $11. The Fairness Project donated $100,000, functionally all on the signature gathering stage. The proposal passed with 68% of votes in favour and was implemented. Section 3. Medicaid Coverage Extension. 2017 Ballots. Starting in 2017, the Fairness Project redirected their primary focus to expanding Medicaid coverage, a joint state and federal programme that covers some medical costs for those with low financial resources. A Supreme Court ruling in 2012 ruled that states do not have to utilise the provisions in the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, that expanded Medicaid coverage, therefore requiring legislation, whether created by state legislatures or successful ballot motions, in order to increase the number of individuals receiving Medicaid assistance. The first campaign, in 2017, offered support by the project was in Maine, where there was strong support to expand Medicaid. The Fairness Project donated $375,000 to aid both the campaigns to have the proposal meet the signature requirements and then the campaign for its passing. The proposal met the requirements to be added to the ballot and passed with a strong majority of 59%. However, main law gives strong abilities for the governor, Paul LePage, to veto past ballot proposals. He did so seven times, stating he will go to jail before I put the state in red ink. 
arguing that a clear funding stream must be designated and in place before he would approve the law. The State House voted in favour of implementing the proposal, 85 to 58, but failed to gather the two-thirds majority needed to override. Janet Mills, succeeding LePage, signed an executive order implementing the change. 2018 Ballots In 2018, the project expanded their support to three similar proposals in Nebraska, Utah and Idaho. As of July 2018, the Utah proposal had satisfied conditions to be voted on in the November elections. The proposals of Nebraska and Idaho also submitted a number of signatures they believed to satisfy ballot requirements, and despite challenges on verification, would be accepted. The project's support was particularly key in gathering the signatures in Nebraska, where $338,000 was spent to support the campaign, primarily by paid signature gatherers. This made up 93% of the pre-ballot spending. Further spending in favour of a yes vote dramatically escalated, with the project providing over 90% of the $990,000 total campaign expenditure in Nebraska by May. Support in Idaho was both reduced in size and proportion, though still significant, with expenditure slightly over half a million dollars, making up 50% of proposal expenditure. Support was also required to be more focused due to a more difficult signature proposal in Idaho than most ballot states. The ballots were successful in all three states. Idaho approved the ballots with a large 61% majority, but the campaigns were far tighter in Nebraska and Utah, with a bare 53% vote share. The Fairness Project remains the primary donor in the three races, with an ultimate combined spend in excess of $6 million. Funding shares remain fairly even, with the most controversial remaining the near 90% share of the Nebraska campaign budget. The 2018 Medicaid ballots also had the project's first failure. A late add-on to the project's campaigns, a Montana ballot to extend the previously temporary expanded Medicaid provision failed to pass. The first loss campaign out of the project's targets, the ballot campaign set a record for the most expensive ever fought in the USA. This was due to the funding provisions of the proposal, which placed additional taxes on tobacco products. As well as significant funding from the project and other like-minded donors in favour, the tobacco industry spent $17 million campaigning in opposition. After a failed vote, a compromised version of the Medicaid expansion was passed in April by the Montana legislature to extend coverage until 2025. 2020 Ballots The primary remaining Medicaid expansion target for the project is Florida, with up to 445,000 citizens potentially to be covered. Ballot measures can institute constitutional amendments, but not new laws, thus requiring over 760,000 signatures to take to ballot and a 60% vote to pass. The project is providing most of the financial backing for local group Florida Size Healthcare, roughly $380,000 as of June 2019, enabling a first stage target of 76,000 signatures to be met. This triggers a state Supreme Court review of the language used, and state economists will review the expected cost of the measure. The difficulties and significant chances of failure have made indications that the campaign groups will delay action until 2022. The other 2020 ballot being targeted is Oklahoma, with the project supporting Oklahomans to decide healthcare with 178,000 signatures necessary to be added to the ballot. Oklahoma has the third highest uninsured rate of any U.S. state, with 5% of the adult population to be affected if the state enacts Medicaid expansion. A 2019 bipartisan legislative working group was formed to consider potential legislative versions of the expansion. An image of the United States demonstrating that those that have adopted expanded Medicaid coverage as of 7th November 2018 accompanies this subsection. Section 4. Other Issues The primary other issue handled by the Fairness Project as of 2019 is the issue of paid sick leave. Initially considered a goal for future election cycles, several of the pre-existing ballot proposals supported in 2016 also had paid sick leave aspects, specifically Washington State and Arizona. A Michigan ballot proposal was completed with over 380,000 signatures, well over the required 252,000, requiring varying levels of paid sick leave depending on company size. 
A significantly smaller role was paid by the Fairness Project in this signature drive, most likely due to an established local committee and significant local support willing to sign for the proposal. An early sum of $100,000 was provided, with an additional $200,000 provided over the remainder of the campaign, and some minor in-kind aid, totalling 16% of campaign funds. The Michigan legislature decided to amend the proposal and vote through an altered variation. The amended law only required paid sick leave coverage from companies with over 50 people and placed a lower maximum cap of 40 hours per year. Campaigns in Texas to implement paid leave have demonstrated increased complexity than has been seen in other normal ballot proposals. No statewide proposal has been offered. Instead, various cities and areas have had local ballot proposals created, most notably in Dallas and San Antonio. This has been driven by the decision of state capital Austin to legislate paid leave in February 2018. The Freedom Project provided a loan of $383,813. The complexity is generated as the Texan Attorney General has asserted that a state law preventing such a requirement overrides any city-level legislation that might occur, even if generated by a ballot. In a significant variation, the project gave a small amount of funding to aid a Colorado ballot to place firm restrictions on payday lending. The ballot sought to reduce the maximum interest rate to 36%, down from 200%, in an effort to reduce the rate of loan default from 25%. Compared to most campaigns, the project support was minor, with under $7,000 contributed out of over $2 million, mostly donated by the like-minded PAC 1630 Fund. The minimal donation was justified by the project by the overwhelming support for the proposal, with ultimately 77% in favour. Section 5. Opposition and Controversies Transparency there have been complaints that as the Fairness Project operates through local organisations or hires in-state groups, while under no requirements to disclose donor lists, they are using dark money to influence elections. This leads to a lack of transparency with voters unable to know exactly which groups might be trying to influence an election. This is particularly viewed as an issue with Medicaid expansion, where groups with a vested financial interest might donate to the Fairness Project to shield their involvement from public awareness. There have also been concerns by the scale of influence that a national campaigning non-profit can use in a state election, with particular concerns when the vast majority of campaign funding is being provided by the project, such as in the Nebraska campaign with over 90% of funding supplied. This has raised concerns about whether state voters are making a local decision by themselves. In a related complaint, there have been accusations that it is unfair for groups to support propositions that they will not be affected by. Ballot usage. Primarily in reaction to the successful ballot proposals on increased minimum wage and Medicaid expansion, various states have either employed their rights to amend proposals in an aggressive fashion, or, more frequently, moved to amend their laws to implement additional restrictions on ballot proposals. The main government has used their right to implement changes to any proposals that receive their minimum number of signatures. This was used to repeatedly delay the effect of a past proposal expanding Medicaid provision by the governor repeatedly vetoing the proposal. Arizona lawmakers have proposed and brought in laws increasing technical requirements in signature gathering, as well as working to repeal laws preventing the repealing of past ballot initiatives. Idaho amended their ballot requirements in 2013 to acquire a geographical aspect. The 6% of voter signatures must also have 6% of registered voters' signatures in 18 of the 35 state legislative districts. The Fairness Project was able to use targeted paid signature gatherers to cover these missing districts, but the change has handicapped additional effort. Section 6. References there are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or by cross-referencing the information yourself. Section 7. External links. Links to the Fairness Project's website and a more detailed overview of every state's ballot proposals were included here. We have now come to the end of the spoken article Fairness Project. This sound file and all text in the article a license under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org.